At this point, are you a full-time recording artist? Yes. And how long would you say, rough estimate, you've been full-time at this? Months now. A year. Like, since January. I'm going to say since January. Oh, when that mixtape had come out. Yes. And we already mentioned this. Quality Control came in. That signing came in July. Yes. Right? Okay, of 2020. So six months later, after being full-time, you actually signed. Now, was that the first time you were ever offered a recording contract? No. My second time. The first time was a um, label in my hometown. It was a small label. They offered me whatever. It just wasn't anything I wanted to settle for. Like, my whole mind was like, I want to be with quality control. And I've been saying that since 2018, so. And how did that happen? Give me the story. Um, so I did a challenge when JT first got out. Um, the JT first day out challenge. I was the first person that did it. And yeah, so he posted me. And then a little mishap happened. So I had to do a part two, you know. And um, he posted it again. And he just kept like DMing me and stuff, sliding up and just liking stuff. I would cover like a lot of his artists, like Layton Green and Lil Baby. And he would just like it. So I knew he was watching. But he never like said, well, first he said like it's gonna be a meeting coming soon. So. I'm like, when is he gonna hit me back up about this meeting? So it never happened. And in July, he just randomly texted, well, DM me and was like, um, early in the morning, he was like, are you signed, what's your number? So I'm playing with my girlfriend, I'm like, P just uh, texted me, of course she think I'm playing because I'm always saying that shit. I'm like, P just texted me, you know, just manifesting it. So he can really hit me up. And then he called me, he was like, send me some songs. So I sent a couple to him and one of them was Big Flexer that just dropped. And um, he called me back like a couple minutes later, was like, I want to sign you. So that's how that happened. Now, 42 Doug is on Big Flexer. Yes. He wasn't originally. No, it was okay. just me. And you said there was a mishap. Are you able to detail the mishap? No. Okay. I don't really want to. Okay. And when it came to quality control, this was your second offer. You yes. didn't want to wait on any further offers from any future record labels? No. Like, I've been wanting to be with Quality Control since 2018. I went to the Trap Museum. I seen their little sign up. And I'm like, this is who I want to be with right now. And I think it was like a little bit before Layton Green got signed. I was like, that's who I want to be signed with. And also, too, just for clarification, when you said you were the first to do the challenge, you actually created the challenge or they... The challenge was already created. You were the first person. No, I like created. He like made it a challenge after I did the cover. Oh, I see. Yes. How'd you get the beat? Oh, uh, it was on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They released the beat, or uh, no? You know, people be remaking. Oh, gotcha. Stuff, so. Now, I do want to ask you this. Okay, you gave me the chronological order of how everything happened after you dropped the mixtape with Quality Control. So you become a full-time recording artist in January, and then July you sign. But between January and July, did you ever feel like quitting? Yes, a lot. Like when stuff would be slow, like when money was slow, that's when I felt like I gotta go get a job or something like, cause my girlfriend was working jobs since like the first day we moved down here. And I just felt like it was just a lot on her. So I'm like, let me go. So I did, I worked at a couple of hotels in Atlanta. I worked at a lot of hotels. And I just, I was trying to make some money. That's how I was telling you, I was selling the pediment, hair, clothes, just everything. It was just tiring, just being in the studio and nothing really happening. Like, I always got, like, recognition from celebrities and stuff, but nothing was really happening. So I'm just like, this is dead. Like, maybe this ain't what's supposed to be happening. Now, it was just a thought or a feeling of quitting, or was there a time where you actually either took a break or really stopped? No, I never stopped. I always, like, I was real consistent and persistent with posting freestyles because that was who I was as an artist, like, Instagram posting the freestyles. That's what people know me for. So I didn't want to stop that. That's how you like people forget about you, you know?
So would you say it was self-motivation that stopped you from quitting or was it a support system perhaps? A support system for sure. Like my girlfriend, she kept me going for like for real because I be bringing her down with my moves like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm not going to make it. Like I don't think I'm too good. Like I think I'm, you know, less than other people type shit. And she would just be, you know, booking sessions, making sure I'm shooting videos. It was just a lot she was doing for me. So, yeah, support system. Now, I do want to ask you this. I want to sidestep and kind of delve into something you had mentioned. When it came to jobs, do you take it upon yourself because you see your girlfriend working and bringing in income, do you take it upon yourself to get jobs and make income or does she suggest it or demand it or give you some sort of ultimatum, hey, you need to... No, I just could see that she was doing, a, like, she was stressed out. She was working a lot. So it was just like, I'm not making no money outside of, like, the money I was making from, like, selling stuff, it just wasn't consistent. Like, you can't, when you first start a shop, you ain't going to get sales every day type shit. So I'm just like, maybe I need to go get a job. And I was working at different hotels, and I just don't like jobs. I don't Can work jobs. Can you give me the job resume that you have? <laughs> okay, so I'm, well, like from when? Milwaukee? Yeah, actually, I, did, I thought you had started working when you came to Atlanta. I didn't know you had gotten a job in Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee, um, I started working at like 16. Okay, so what was your first job ever? McDonald's. McDonald's, then I went to um, Target. Then I went back to McDonald's. And then my last job in Milwaukee was a hotel. Care to share the name of the hotel? Comfort Suites, I believe. Comfort Inn and Suites. And then you get to Atlanta, you do school at first, you drop out, you do the mixtape, and then what was the first job after that in Atlanta? I don't remember the hotel name, but I worked at three hotels out here. Okay. And the first, no, the first one where I had to quit was Hampton Inn. It was so nasty. Uh, oh my God, it was like some shit on the sheets. And she was like, you gonna see that a lot. You gotta pick it up. Like, <laughs> you gotta pick it up. I'm not picking that shit up. So I just stopped working there. And then I went to another one, out. What was home to suites. It was super clean, like it was super nice. It was easy. So I worked there for a minute, then I quit. Then I worked at another one, like a couple, like two months later. A month or so later. Okay. And do you remember that the name of that hotel? I don't remember the last one. It was closer to my house, though. Now, let's talk about the very first job, McDonald's. How did you get introduced to that? Oh, uh, how what, did I get what introduced What led to that, that job there? I think I just wanted my own money, so I just started filling out applications. Um, my best friend had a job when we was in high school. So I was just like, I need to get a job too. Everybody having a job, buying their own stuff for homecoming and shit. Like I just gotta, I be asking my mama for money. And I don't feel like no type of ways when I ask her for money either. She's my mom. But I felt like I need to get my own money. So I went and started filling out applications. I think my cousins was working at that one. And yeah, that's what happened. Cousin on your mother's side? Yeah. And what was your position at McDonald's? Cashier. Yep. Or they, when I first started, they had me on the fries. Yeah. And how long did you do that before Target? I'm going to say like two months. And you quit or get fired the very first job? I quit. I quit. And then you listed the other places that you worked at. Now, out of all the places that you worked, right, and you gave us six here, were any of the jobs tough? Except for the hotels with the nasty sheets, no. And when you say there was, I'm not going to cuss, but you said the <laughs> S word. When you said there was the S word on the sheets, we're talking about like defecation? Yes. And it was some like rooms that had blood on the sheets, like yes. And the person like who was training me, she was just picking it up with no effort, just folding them up. Nah. Gloves on, gloves off? Gloves on. So what was your role at that hotel in particular? 
I was a housekeeper. Okay. Was it housekeeper at each of the hotels you were at? Yes. Couldn't get the desk gig? <laughs> I didn't apply for the desk gig. Oh. I should have done. Now, were any of the jobs that you worked at dangerous? No. When I worked at Target, though, it was on Black Friday. I remember it was these um, people that came up in there and they were trying to steal an Xbox. And, like, the people that was at the door would be like, if somebody come in here stealing, y'all need to, you know, basically risk our lives. But I'm not doing that. So I did. I swear to God, I let somebody walk out with two Xboxes on Black Friday. They would have beat my ass. Now, it, did you get in trouble for that? No. And I ain't you, get in trouble, but I quit that job, though. So if they would have knew about it, it would just, I probably would have got fired. And these were total strangers. You didn't know these people. I just let them go. I don't know them folks. Did any coworkers see you do that? No. It was me and then this girl, Amber, at the door with me. But she was minding her business. Now, out of all the jobs you mentioned, what was the best thing about any of these? Nothing. And well, paychecks. Okay. <laughs> Which one gave you the best paycheck? Target. And I'm assuming that the defecation on the sheets and the blood was probably going to be this next answer, but I was going to ask what was the worst thing about any of these jobs? Matt. Okay. Aside from that situation, any crazy stories and the Xbox situation, any crazy stories, anything else that happened out of the norm at any of these jobs? No. Okay. I never wanted to work. And uh, you were doing music while you had these jobs? Yes. Did anyone notice you at your job as a recording artist? Uh, not so much in Atlanta, but like when I was in Milwaukee, yes. Like kids used to come in here and try to like, can we take a picture with you when I was the cashier at McDonald's in my McDonald's uniform and stuff. Was that flattering to you or embarrassing? It was flattering, but like my managers used to get mad when I used to walk from around the corner, cause like around the thing, cause I did want to take pictures with them. Would you ever play it off when someone recognized you at McDonald's? Yes. <laughs> did you ever feel bad about that? Um, no, I just didn't want to be taking pictures in my McDonald's uniform. Now you quit a few of these jobs. Did you get fired at any of these jobs? Or was it you quitting every job? Yeah, I quit every job, I ain't gonna lie. I was never really fully committed to a job. Did you ever quit any of these jobs for music? Mm, or, my or, last job here, like it was just like I wanted to focus on music. And like that's when income started coming in. Now you worked at McDonald's. That was the only food gig you had. Because you worked at McDonald's twice, and when you went back to McDonald's, I forgot to ask you this, was it the same exact location? No. Oh, it was a different location. Mm -hmm. Because you worked at McDonald's, are you sick of their food? I hate McDonald's, but I eat like some fresh fries. Like my, lately my girlfriend be like having random ass cravings. Like I want some McDonald's. So she really made me try that Travis Scott meal. Yeah. Would I you? didn't eat the burger. No, I got them spicy chicken nuggets that just came out. She ate the Travis Scott meal. Now, if you could, would you ever consider owning any of the jobs you worked at? Owning them? Yeah. No. Well, yes. Is that good? Like, owning a McDonald's? It seems like they make a lot of money. I, I don't own a McDonald's, <laughs> so I don't know personally. But I think they make a lot of money. But, yeah, I will own a McDonald's. A couple of them.